Hello. Hello! My name is Matt. My name is Abigail. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Polyglot, Polyglot Progress. Progress. We hit 1,000 subscribers. It's kind of crazy. So today, in honor of hitting 1,000 subscribers, we figured that we would do kind of a personal Q&A. Yep. We asked for questions about ourselves or languages if you couldn't think of any, so we did get a lot of questions <laughs> about language things. But we're just going to answer all of the questions you guys sent us, and I guess I'll apologize in advance if we pronounce your name slash username completely wrong. Cause yes. Jay Fanis asks, how did you guys meet? We met on the internet. We met through a mutual friend of ours who ran a collab channel. It was really for YouTubers, filmmakers. We were both into that back in the day. She's still into it more than I am. And uh, that's how we met online. And then we just met through there and kept talking because of our similar interest in music, actually. And then we met up in person to go to a concert together. So that's that. LeeMoro08 asks, what does each of your parents think about your friendship? My parents love you. So Colton Language asks, hi. Abigail said she had a double major at her university. What is her other major other than languages? Also, do you have any interest in conference interpreting? My other major is film production. Like, obviously I've got no training in this, so that's part of it, and obviously I probably could train and maybe feel a little bit differently, but as it stands currently, I just feel like my brain doesn't work in the way that it would need to to interpret conferences. Like, you have to be able to, like, so say quick. what's happening and move on to the next thing and be translating oh at the same time. Something like, she's always wanted um, to do is do ASL interpreters at concerts. Yeah, I'd love to be a concert ASL interpreter. Like, that's, like, one of my biggest goals. So, obviously, eventually, I'd love to do that. But for now, I... Like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd ever want to even be an interpreter for, like, French or German or something. I'd like, love to give it a shot, though. Like, maybe not at a conference where someone's depending on me for the information. Yeah, yeah I, I don't see myself doing it in the future, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. have the goal of aspiring to do that, with the exception of maybe some ASL concert interpreting. Um, but... I mean, who knows? I'm gonna read that in a Norwegian voice. Jeroen uh, Bolde. What would you do if your socks started talking Arabic to you all of a sudden? I would ask them the question words, uh, where, what, who, why, and how, and then that would be all I'd say back to them. I, if they could, I'd have them teach me Arabic. Ophelia asks, if you could give some advice to your 12-year-old selves, what would you say? Why did you wait until you were older to start learning languages? <laughs> I honestly, that was what I was going to say too, because I, I did learn languages when I was that young, but yeah. I never stuck with anything. No, I had so And many I feel interests. like I Just also had that languages. view that so many people have that like once you reach a certain age, you can't learn it anymore, but 12 is still really young. Yeah. So I wish that I, like, had I learned something at 12, I think I would I would be like really good at it now. So I, I guess I wish that I had done that. But at the same time, like, I mean, I guess I tried out other things when I was 12, so. I guess I'm kind of one of those per people that's more so like no regrets because I guess I have learned something from everything that I've done, so. That's true. Same thing here. Igor Ambrosio. He asks, hi, I'm from Brazil. Where are you from? I'm from New York, the United States. Doesn't get much more exciting than that. Long Island, if you want to be specific. I am also from the United States, from Connecticut, but currently going to school in New York. I live really near the city, but I don't live in the city. August it asks, do your parents ever say why are you learning all of these languages or why are you studying this language? Yes. I don't think my parents actually have ever said this. I think just neither of my parents has like really an interest in languages so they don't necessarily have one that they want me to be learning. I certainly have people asking why I haven't learned like Spanish or anything but I guess my parents like also at this point like I, I studied Bulgarian intensively for a whole summer so I think at this <laughs> point they're just kind of like... True. My parents more so my dad the other day goes, how many languages do you speak? And I'm like, I guess I tell people five currently. I don't really, it, like, it depends on what you quantify it as. And he goes, oh, I've been telling people eight. Yeah, my parents are always like, um, Norwegian? Where did that come from? And I've been asked many a time to learn Spanish. And then when I start learning Spanish, they get very excited. Martin Lalarge asks, serious question, on a scale from one to ten, what's your favorite color of the alphabet? 14. Maxens is here too, as while we're at it, does synesthesia ever affect your language choices? Yeah, language? I do have synesthesia, actually. Yeah, she, she experiences um, it. I, I don't think it affects necessarily what language I want to learn. It affects how I like, color code them. <laughs> yeah, it affects how I color code things, honestly. <laughs> Thomas V asks, do you guys ever plan on making foreign languages a part of your future job slash careers? If so, what job do you plan on doing with them? And Ella asks, hey, I'm interested in similar majors, so what do you guys plan on doing after you graduate slash as careers? For any 
anyone who does not know, I am a double major with languages and culture with a concentration in French and film production. I'm an incoming freshman with a creative, creative writing, writing major yeah. and a linguistics minor, and I'm gonna make that a double major if I can. Career-wise for me, I would like to be self-employed, which is basically the only thing I can do if we're being real. <laughs> so I guess I'd like to be working on film sets, both my own and other people's. I'd like to also do like kind of YouTube and social media mm -hmm. as kind of a thing. I'd like to be making films or just like online video content, like kind of new media style stuff. And I mean, for Polyglot Progress, that kind of incorporates languages. And I'd also, mm -hmm. I haven't, I don't have a ton of experience with this, so I don't actually know if I really want to do it, but um, at least currently as it stands, I'd like to be doing some translating work as well. I think it would be cool to kind of incorporate both together, like also if I could get on some international film sets. For me, with creative writing, I'm a person that's big into like fiction and um, sci-fi fantasy most of the time, but I've been big into magical realism and that has a lot to do with South America and I've been reading a lot of Hakuri Murakami recently, um, so Japan, and like it takes you all over the world. And so I want to basically create more fiction that has languages in it and by that I mean like the actual use of foreign languages. When you when you dive into meaning of texts, um, I want foreign languages to play a role in the meaning and whether it's people misunderstanding each other, people overcoming linguistic boundaries, that's something I'm very big into and I actually wrote a film about that recently. And then with linguistics and just languages in general, I'd love to make a career out of doing things online with video content. I recently became a tutor on italki. People always say, yo, you should teach languages, you like languages, teach them. Um, so I'll see if I enjoy that enough to pursue a degree in teaching, maybe. Uh, who knows, or even just teach online and tutor for, the, for my life. I'd be cool with that. Thanks, Maya says, it's really neat that you listen to... Verkuli. So what other Norwegian music do you listen to? I listen to lots of Norwegian music. No, yeah, I love Verkuli. I also listen to Razika, Carpe Diem, Krokosol. So yeah, if you have any recommendations, I would love to hear them because I love Norwegian music. She also asks, are either Abigail or are you part of larger community Esperanto groups? I'm part of the Duolingo Esperanto Learners Facebook group, but that's, yeah. that's it. I, I'm also part of that. Active I'm not active in it, in it yeah. No. But yeah, we're not necessarily in one. La Palm asks, okay, my questions are, can you list all the languages that you speak, at least a bit, and above all, what are they? And what is the word that you know in the most languages? For example, I know Apple in eight languages. All the languages you can speak. English, French, German, Esperanto, Bulgarian, um, and then... That's fine. Japanese, Spanish. These are like, you're learning. These are the ones that I like really don't know, but yeah. I guess I could do a little bit in. So Japanese, Spanish. I guess I know like a few words in ASL and I could fingerspell technically anything. So if you want to sit there as I like slowly fingerspell out my whole sentence, then I, I guess ASL. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's it. English, German, French, Esperanto, good amount of Norwegian, learning Japanese now. And Spanish. Um, so these are the ones I'm pretty comfortable in. We both studied Arabic, but I don't think we know any no. Arabic. Okay. So like, we're around the same amount. And then five we're comfortable in, and then others we're learning. What's the word that you know in the most languages? I think I could probably say I am called. Like my name mm -hmm. is. Passion for Dreaming's questions are. She asked Benny and Lewis this recently. And wants to know our take. Okay. Does our method of learning languages change when we learn a Romance language versus an Asian language, and how so? I can actually. Oh wait, I want to add to my list of languages Hebrew. Uh -huh. I didn't spend a semester of Hebrew for nothing. <laughs> so I think I can definitely answer this. Considering I have recently come out of learning, like, French for the past e year or so, to learning Japanese right now. So when it comes to me and Asian languages, the grammar is totally backwards for me. And so I like to know that this symbol, this word here, coordinates to what's over here in English, but here it's this, and it, it goes here, and it, it just helps me familiarize myself with the spacing of the language and how it's structured. So yeah, it, it's weird, but it, it, it works very well with me. Uh, I don't know. I can I can explain. I can elaborate on this further maybe in another video. I'd say I don't know if I have enough experience to answer this yet because... Me as well. I think I can definitely answer this. I've only studied Japanese for like less than a week. Like I've done maybe four days of studying Japanese. <laughs> I feel like I've kind of gone about studying it the same way. I start in the same place, try and learn the same few phrases and whatnot. So I have Actually, I don't know how much my thing has changed. I'll, I'll get back to you on that after I've studied an Asian language for a longer period of time. But I think in general, although an Asian language has proved to be a bit more difficult in pronunciation and also just in words and grammar and things than the Romance languages it's I've studied, I think you can kind of approach it in the same way and you don't necessarily need to be afraid by them because I think oh, if you do not. approach it in the same way as like learn these things first and kind of get your feet and then try and build sentences and things. Like, I, I think 
you can approach them in the same way, pretty much. How do you edit your thumbnails and channel art? I've been on YouTube for a while, but I'm still a noob at graphics. I am also a noob at graphics, so I'm gonna turn this one over to our graphic designer, Matt. <laughs> Hi, I used to be big into graphic design, and I literally used to specialize in graphic design on YouTube. You use Microsoft, I believe there's a program called GIMP, G-I-M-P, which is free for download, and it's basically just like a basic version of Photoshop that works just as well. And then I believe on Mac, if GIMP's not available, there is a program called Pixelmator, which is what I used forever before I got Photoshop. Unless it's price change, it used to be like $8. If you want to have all your thumbnails look the same, make yourself like a preset and save yes. it. Yes, and I basically do that with Polyglot Progress, depending on what the dumb thumbnail is. I basically just take our text and I put also, it there. Also, pose for a thumbnail before the video starts. Uh, La Palme asks, and do you have words that you find funny, beautiful, or interesting? Or so. Yes. I'm a lover of words. I think there's a name for that. I think I have different favorite words when it comes to different languages, but like, words that transcend all languages. My favorite word of all is probably petrichor, which is the smell of the earth or, d or dirt after rain in English. And then there is, um, Valdeinsamkeit, which is the solid. it's like a feeling of solitude in the woods in German. I have iridescent, which is another English one, which is like the change in colors that you see in a bubble. I have a funny word in German, which is Arbeitsunfähigkeitsbescheinigung. It's a note that you get from your doctor, which says you're too sick to work. And I just always find that funny. It's like, oh, ich brauche eine Arbeitsunfähigkeitsbescheinigung. My favorite word used to be Mamila Pinata Pie, which is the look <laughs> shared between two people, each wishing that the other would initiate something that they both desire, but which the neither wants to begin. I also have another English word, which I remember I was learning in like fifth grade and I went to my fifth grade teacher and she was like, how can you say that word? And I, if I <laughs> if I remember it, it's um, pneumonal ultramicroscopic silico silicovolcano caniosis. And it's like a disease that you get when you inhale volcanic dust. So I wrote a paper on acanthamoeba keratitis, which is... <laughs> It's a parasite you get from oh. either wearing your contacts too long or swimming in like dirty water or something like lake water. Um, oh my god! And it's the acanthamoeba, and it goes into your eye and it like eats your Stop. cornea. Stop! Stop! Oh my gosh! Similarly, Geraldine Rodriguez asks, "What are your favorite words in each of the languages you study?" So I guess we'll go one language at a time. French. My favorite word is semblable, so which good. means similar. It's like not even that blah, funny. Blah. And also, I think it's pronounced semblable. My friend and I like became obsessed with this word like sophomore year of high school, and we always said semblable, and it just sounds really funny. And it's fun to say, semblable. like your mouth is like. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, German Eichhörnchen, because it's so fun to watch people try to pronounce. And then when like I Eichhörnchen uh, in French. Eichhörnchen. Um, my favorite word in German for a while, at least, was Krankenwagen. Um, <laughs> simply because of like <laughs> sick wagon like <laughs> is so good so then after that I guess Esperanto do you have a favorite word there I don't oh. remember what my favorite word in Esperanto was I did have one for a while though Spanish I don't think I remember enough to have a favorite word um, but fun fact about Spanish in seventh grade Spanish class my Spanish name was Moni and so my Spanish teacher would call me Mono and give me his banana peels and half-eaten bananas because <laughs> Mono means monkey in Spanish. <laughs> Bulgarian, I honestly really like the word Blagodaria. <laughs> and I, don't, I like that it word. It just means thank you, but like I really like the way it sounds. It's like so cool. So like, uh, Blagodaria might be my favorite word. Hebrew, I honestly, like, I can't, <gasps> my favorite I can't word. say anything for you no. other than shalom. <laughs> Question, do you ever get lazy and how do you deal with laziness and get motivated to study languages? Watching Tim Donor, the, the thinker video. How I deal with laziness, it depends on the kind of laziness because honestly, a lot of this year I didn't get to study languages. But the thing is, is that I was facing burnout more so than just straight up laziness. Huge load of school. And I kind of have come to the conclusion where I, I don't feel bad that I didn't get to study languages this year. Like, sure, I would have loved to, but I do think sometimes when you're feeling, like, lazy, but it's more so, like, burnout from school or work you or just life. You need to understand why it would you, you You have to let yourself rest and not necessarily force yourself to then study a language. I, I think then you're just going to lose your love of languages and you're also going to end up hurting yourself. If you go, you tell yourself you're only going to work for five minutes. And then basically after the five minutes, you're allowed to stop if you want. But typically, you'll actually want to keep working after that. You can also try and, like, ease your way into it. There's, there's a blog post on language crawler, which I read the other day, which had the tip of like what to do when you feel like you're making no progress, and it was to watch a movie or a show of a language with subtitles that you don't know anything of, and then go into the language that you are focusing on studying, of a movie or TV show, and see how much you remember with, like, with or without subtitles. It's a reminder, like, you don't know nothing. You know something in this language. Yeah, so I guess it depends on how it is. Basically what I want to make a podcast on is like, there's all these poly, the, these like polyglots out there that are like, you feel like you don't have time, but you can make the time. But I feel like something that I've come to recently is there is such thing as not having time for things. And... Totally. It's okay, 
honestly. Like, sure, it does get in the way of learning things, but I think if you try to do everything all at once, you're gonna end up never getting to do anything. Kyle Radden asks, what are your favorite movies or TV shows? Perhaps one English and one non-English. I think in recent time, my favorite movie was Arrival because of its dealing with languages. And then my favorite TV show is probably Game of Thrones. I also like the movie James Cameron's Avatar. So favorite TV shows are Twin Peaks, Gilmore Girls, and Parks and Rec. Favorite mm -hmm. movies? Favorite movie essay is The oh. Princess Bride, which is totally non like film related. Like it's not like <laughs> it's a so film good, school though. answer in the slightest, but I love it. I also so really good. like Moonrise Kingdom. I also love Ask Vida Da where he's Look Who's Back which is um, a German movie where Hitler comes back to life and it's like a mockumentary on his life. And it's also political commentary. Non-English, Boys Before slash Boys Over Flowers. There's two different translations of the name, but that one is my favorite Korean drama. I just watched My Little Lover, which is a Japanese drama, and it was I'm watching good. it now. She got me to um, watch yeah, it. Yeah, I got Matt to watch it. I actually <laughs> learned a lot of Japanese just by watching it. I forgot that you can consider anime as TV shows. Anime-wise, um, Oran High School Host Club is the best one. For favorite anime uh, TV show, Jap Japanese, Nichi Zhao, Angel Beats, Sword Art Online, and then Attack on Titan. Ophelia yes. again asks, what is our favorite alphabet, whether in terms of theory, history, calligraphy, etc. At least currently the Japanese. I love the Japanese. Um, just because, writing system. like, the period is a dot and it's adorable. I find the Japanese writing system just, like, flat out, like, adorable. I mean... Like, you could write the most serious paper about death in Japanese and I'd be like, oh, so kawaii. I don't want to say the Latin, but the German version of the Latin alphabet, I've always, I always like umlaut. It's like, look at the little dots. It's so great. And then the S set. And then I love Norwegian. I guess I love any non-basic Latin alphabet. Non-basic? I'm talking to you, English. Get some accents up in there. It really, it'll help out your aesthetics. I really... That's when we insert just clips of like those like Instagrammers that <laughs> oh. like throw in every language for aesthetics. She also asks as a personal question, advice for LDRs at different colleges. The internet exists nowadays, so it is so much easier to keep up a relationship and make it seem like you're in the same room. I I'm in high school still, but I have a friend who has a boyfriend in France. Boundaries of the world are not the same as they used to be. We are not confined to pen and paper anymore and uh, bad air transportation of mail. Take advantage of the internet connection you have been granted, whether it is poor or really great. Long distance relationship tip. Don't use don't Skype. Don't use Skype. Skype just hasn't been working for like anyone recently. So. I, I try to use my mobile device, so like my phone connected to Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and it's just such a better connection than my laptop or my PC. Other than that, I guess just being in a long distance relationship, like obviously you probably didn't Communication. choose. To do that, but like you're gonna have to kind of sacrifice some things for it. So like make key. times, yeah, communication, make time for each other, whether it's for a Skype call at the end of a day, or um, like for visits. If you like, if maybe feasible. maybe you'll have to give something up for both of you to meet up the one weekend when it would be possible to buy a plane ticket to see them or something. Obviously, communicate because that's like what you need in any relationship. But if you're apart, then even more so. <laughs> I guess everyone says like have trust, but like you gotta also just know that you each need your own personal space. Like make time for each other so that way you can have time apart and be your own people. Ella Beatles asks, in your opinion, what is one of the most rewarding feelings when learning a language? When I complete. A successful italki lesson with a tutor, or when you're out in public and your family or friends pressure you to speak to somebody, or you're just a confident, outgoing person that speaks to people. Picture like a snail like retracting into its shell. It's like me. <laughs> Someone asked like, what one GIF would you use to represent yourself? It's I like a gif. snail sliding into its shell. That's me. GIF. Graph. Comment down below. Is no. It GIF or no. GIF? Do not begin this. We do not need to tear apart our audience. I think actually the most rewarding feeling is when you look back at like old notebooks. Oh my god. Finishing a book. That's Which a good I don't know one. if I've, I've only ever done that. Once, book. Yeah. The Costa Rican polyglot asks, can you guys do a video of your language bullet journals? And funnily enough, we don't necessarily have a bullet journal, bullet journals which are dedicated to languages. It's something I've thought of doing before and I've made spreads in my bullet journal which are dedicated to like specific languages. I posted at one point on Instagram a spread that I'd made for language stuff and I said that I would do a video on that. I would like to do a bullet journal video at some point. I'll do it on that and then I might make Possibly for my personal channel, possibly for this channel, just a video about my bullet journal in general because honestly, the bullet journal system changed my life. Like, I think I was like, oh, it changed your life. <laughs> but like, genuinely, I think I'm probably Three. about like 90% more productive than I was before I started. Shantae Edwards 
asks, curious question, do you ever mismatch similar languages while speaking, like speaking Spanish and accidentally switching into Portuguese mid-sentence? And if you don't, how do you keep similar languages separate in your head when learning and speaking? I don't really laugh a lot of times when I hear stuff like this because I'm like, like, how do you confuse them? And then I realized, oh, the words nearly sound the same. And it happened to me when I first started picking up Norwegian. In German class, my accent, my German accent, I was losing it because I was so used to doing the Norwegian up and down thing that my German sentences started to sound really weird and it took, I had to like, okay, you know, German is this thing which is over here and Norwegian's over here. <laughs> I had to like push them apart if they're getting that cluttered and you need to very, very much focus on the sounds because no language sounds the same as the other. There's always sound differences. Portuguese has a bigger sound inventory than Spanish, so you've got sounds in Portuguese that don't exist in Spanish. That's a big way to keep them separate. We sort of already answered these questions, but we're going to touch on them again. Caleb L. asks, Matt, do you plan on getting a degree for linguistics or anything language related? If our school will allow me to get a double major, which hopefully they will, uh, then yes, I would love to. Also, how supportive are your two's parents about languages? We kind of already touched on this. Pretty supportive. Mine, I guess, are pretty supportive. Don't, I mean, at least I'm not doing hard drugs or something. Ryan R. asks, I feel that language is in the United States elementary, middle, high schools are being overlooked and Say being it louder. pushed out. Say it louder. How do you view this? Is this a problem that you have seen in Say it louder. Case? Is there a way to put help put languages on the same level as math, science, history, ETC? <laughs> Scream I'm, it to the rooftops. I'm the last grade taking French in my school and I'm graduating next year. I hope to revive it, but I was wondering if other schools are experiencing similar issues. My board of education decided to remove a program in the elementary schools which teaches them every three days of school they get 20 minutes of Spanish. It has improved their overall reading. Their reasoning was, we need more time to uh, focus on reading and writing. I got so fired up, I went and gave a speech. Any efforts you can get involved in to save language programs, revive any languages that are going on in your community, the, the, the world will thank you for it. If I'm being completely honest, I think the way to get schools to focus on it more would be to have language be mandatory for standardized testing because that's what schools want that's at what this schools point, care. but is that going to happen? Probably not. So I guess the only thing you can do is get your community, like Matt went to the board of ed thing, like try and get your I community. I went to several board of ed meetings. Languages and show them the benefits of it, but I, I don't think it's going to be taken as seriously as math, science, reading, and writing until it's put as a mandatory standardized test thing. And of course, math, English, and everything else matters too. We're just saying like, this needs attention as well. Diego Primo asks, uh, have you ever dreamed in another language? Or if you are saying something like a title of a movie in the original language and then change it quickly to its language. So for dreaming in another language, I have, if I'm speaking to someone that only speaks English, I just translate the movie title into English and say that I was watching that. Just yeah, to make it too. easier for them because they're going to be like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Also, if I'm telling a story from like French class, I just translate whatever happened into English instead yes. of telling them what happened in French, so. I don't think I do that. Why you not? don't. You say the thing like <laughs> twice. You're like, she asked, how was my day? And then you like say it in the language <laughs> just to prove that you can speak the language. Of course. Ling Sok asks, what are some other languages that you would like to learn that you haven't previously studied? Hungarian Ooh. and Finnish. I would like to Mandarin. do- I would like to do Mandarin as well. Hindi. Hindi and Urdu. Farsi. Um, some sort of Bantu language, not sure which, Osa. but some sort of Bantu. I, I see, guess those are all yeah. the ones that I haven't, haven't that. previously studied. Nindo Akuma asks, what is something I can do to improve my accent? And this is something I think I'll do fully in another video. Quick answers. Listen to lots of music, lots of videos, and if you have a text with audio, producing language as you're listening to it, this way you'll find that you're trying to match the sounds. Did it best with Norwegian because I did I, I basically learned, learned Norwegian through music listen a lot speak a lot with people that can correct you and try just reading things aloud Dana Dana Dana, Dana asks since summer vacation is coming and I'm gonna have lots of free time I wanted to ask you guys how you organize your time and how do you learn completely two completely different languages at the same time for me French and Korean organizing your time I'd say come up with what languages you want to learn you already know you want to do French and Korean yep then kind of come up with how much you want to do that per day and come up with things that you want to be doing for each of the languages. so that way you're not spending your whole hour finding resources you know that you're gonna to go to talk to me in korean.com for an hour and then do French teach yourself for an hour and those are your two hours of study a day I think bullet journaling totally helps similarly Vanessa Beth asks do you have 
both have rigid routines for language learning or do you just do it when you can? Do you find it, it is most helpful to sit down for a period of time to study or by engrossing yourself in a language, for example, just having conversations or watching a film? Mm -hmm. How do you keep on top of so many languages? Again, do you tackle that by having a language schedule? This is an interesting question and it's asking a lot. Well, I answer this as best as I can. I do not have a rigid language schedule, but I think just internally, language is always on my mind, so I'm always getting to it in what I'm doing. And I definitely think that you need to balance engrossing yourself uh, through like immersion and um, sitting down for study because I don't think that you can necessarily learn just by immersion or just by study. You need a mix of both and I think a healthy amount of both necessary. Yeah, I'd say I don't have necessarily a rigid routine currently, but I do have the routine of I've been trying to do about a half hour of a language a day. It's kind of turned more into doing like a lesson of whatever it is that I'm doing. So I do a lesson of easy Japanese. I do something with German every day. I kind of change it up today. I did mango languages, but recently I've been doing a lot of Duolingo. Matt and I try and do half a chapter at a time of colloquial Latin American Spanish. When we have time, we're trying to make it every day, but with Matt's exams right now, it's kind of every other day-ish. Yeah. And then if I have extra time, I'll do something like refreshing my Bulgarian or working on my French. I would say that having a routine would help with maintaining lots of languages though, oh, totally. but it depends totally. on you how much free time you have in a day and what you think you can do. Maxins is here too, asks, I love to see people's language books slash resources in general in notebooks. Can you show them off for us? We will Ooh. do that in a video in the future. Do you organize them in a certain way or just put the most used one where ones wherever is convenient? Uh, do you like shakshuka? Kinder eggs? What's your favorite food? Matt, do you have favorite poems in any language? I have my books organized in like a... I have my teach yourself books and like instructional books in one area and then everything else in another and then some books in a thing. Do you like shakshuka? I honestly don't know no what shakshuka what is. is. Should um, we look it up? I do like Kinder Eggs. I love Kinder although Eggs. Although they're banned in America. <laughs> um, my German host family had a bowl of Kinder Eggs Wait, for shakshuka me. is in, is in New York City. It's a dish of poached eggs and a sauce of tomato. It sounds good. That looks delicious. I've never had- I'm gonna try that now. But I- yeah, I've never even heard of that. It's a Middle Eastern so. dish. Thank you for telling us Thank about Shakshuka. <laughs> Matt, favorite poems in any language? My school was giving away a whole bunch of books on German poetry and I took all of them. I have this one I love, but I don't remember the name of it, so that's good. Okay. I'm sorry, I'll get back to you on that. Maxins is here too, also asks, I wonder if any of you has have plushies? Also, have you ever been in a situation where someone just didn't believe that you could speak slash have learned another language? At International Night, which is a night which celebrates language learning at my school, I won a United Nations bear. I guess I have like other stuffed animals that I had from when I was younger, but basically ones that I brought with me to college, I have a cat that I got on my first birthday and was like my favorite stuff stuffed animal was it when I was a kid like it was the one that I carried with me everywhere and stuff and then I've got a, a like a teddy bear that my boyfriend gave me. You have an alligator and a raccoon. All right so that is all of your questions. Thank you guys so much for asking and thank you so so much for 1,000 subscribers. We have already passed 1,150 yeah, at and that's the time been of filming like, this. Like we literally have been planning this video for maybe a week or two and yes. now we're at 1,150 so that's just crazy. We, if you'd like to see more Q&As in the future then let us know because this, yes. this was fun getting to take your questions and respond to them. Thank you for watching. And remember, practice, practice makes, makes progress. progress.